Hey, what's up, guys? Hope you enjoyed that slightly changed intro. Uh, don't expect that to be the same for too long because uh, in a few days I should have an all new Metal Gear Solid themed intro. My brother, aka Breaded Boss, is working on it right now, and it's gonna be pretty awesome. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you guys enjoyed the last video, and hold on a sec. Be careful. You absolutely must not use weapons in that area. I've already programmed the nanomachine so that he won't be able to, Colonel. What? What are you talking about? Have you forgotten? That's where they keep the nuclear warheads. Can't you see them? Yeah, there's lots of boxes piled up here, but are they all warheads? Yes, they're all dismantled warheads. They just leave them here? It's like President Baker said. Totally careless. They're working on a limited budget. They try to put on a pretty face for the media, but this is the grim reality of it. Nastasha knows lots more about it than I do. Her frequency is 141.52. All of the warheads in those boxes have had their detonation mechanisms removed, so there's no fear of them exploding. But if the warheads are broken, they might leak plutonium, and that would be a serious problem. Snake, never use your weapon on that floor. Alright, so this area is the area that is right after uh, the area where you fight Vulcan Raven, obviously. And this is another just generic warehouse type area. It's actually very, very similar to the last area I was just in before the snowfields. And it's similar in the sense that there is also an elevator, and I'm currently on floor number one right now, and there is an elevator that will take you down to two other floors. There is a basement one and a basement two. And most of the time will be spent in those basement areas. This is kind of just the generic area with like three guards and a camera. And once you get past this area, most of the time spent will be in the basement areas. Uh, finding card keys, finding items, and fighting some bosses. And hopefully in this video I'll get to it. Uh, the um, ninja fight. I forget, the cyborg ninja fight. Um, it was pretty much one of my most anticipated battles as a kid. Once I saw him cut off the hand of Revolver Ocelot, I was just like, Oh my god! And right here I'm just going to kill myself because I'm trapped and I don't know why I ran in here. <laughs> but, yeah, after, like, after you see the ninja cut off Revolver Ocelot's hand, um, you're just like, well, at least when you're a kid, I was just like, That is so badass! Uh, I want to fight this guy so bad! And I was looking forward to it. And you don't have to wait too long because obviously this is still pretty early on in the game. And... You get to the fight pretty early, and it's not quite what you think. Well, at this point, you don't really have any idea who the Cyborg Ninja is, unless this obviously isn't your first time playing, or if you've read the spoilers or whatever. But you don't realize that the Cyborg Ninja is actually Gray Fox, who you meet. His, I think his real name is Frank Yeager, um, and you meet him in like the earlier Metal Gear games before this one. And I've actually personally never played those. I have read uh, the stories, I've read the plot synopsis, and, you know, pretty much what happens in them. So I know the story, but I never played those games. But I guess he is presumably, well, he is killed in the second one, Metal Gear 2, or whatever it's called. And so this is the first time that you actually get to fight him in this game. Well, really the only time you fight him in this game, but this is where, this area is where you really learn about a story in the battle and in the cutscene afterwards where you talk to Colonel Campbell and Naomi on uh, the codec. Uh, but really before I get to any of that I should probably work on actually finding a way to leave this room because I'm having a lot more trouble than I first thought I would. Um, once this guard passes we should be able to make our way up to the elevator. I don't think the guy in the railing will bother me anymore. And then I will go down to the basement. Floor number two I think is where they said that Otacon was, or Hal Emmerich. Um, I don't know what's in basement floor one at the moment. Uh, we'll probably have to go down there. Well, obviously, I know I will have to go down there eventually, but I'm going to see if I can just go right to basement floor two. I'm not sure what one I have to actually have to go through first. But I know this room... What is this hallway? I can't even remember. Oh, you know what this is going to be? This is going to be the hallway that has the electrical floor. Hold on. Yep. To get through this hallway... You are going, well, I am going to need uh, Nikita missiles, and I probably get those in the first basement floor. I probably shouldn't have come down to the second basement uh, this soon. But yeah, the, this floor is like electrified, and you need to use the missiles to shoot them all the way down this hallway and kind of guide them 
uh, all the way through a hallway through many turns. Uh, the Nakino missiles are pretty cool in that aspect. You can do some cool things to them. You actually need them later for a boss fight against Vulcan Raven. So I'm going to have to go get those right now. But yeah, this game is just full of cool things like that. Uh, you'll get stuck in an area like this, and you're like, alright, what the hell am I supposed to do now? And sure enough, there's some type of gadget or weaponry that you will end up using that you didn't even know existed that will end up getting you through the area. And I don't even know if some of this stuff exists today or how realistic it is, but hey, it's fun to use in a video game setting. I can't reach it. And actually, I'm pretty sure the guy I'm talking to right now, that static guy that calls himself Deep Throat, I'm pretty sure that guy is actually the cyborg ninja. I think he's kind of watching you and he helps you out at times, and that's why he goes he uses that t voice changer type thing. I actually can't be sure about that. I don't know if it's Gray Fox or not, but if my memory serves me correctly, I believe it is him. Uh, so right here, I'm going to go to basement floor one, and ooh, this is a nice floor. Uh... And a little bit later, not in this video, of course, uh, this is where the area where you fight Psycho Mantis, which is just an incredible, incredible boss battle. Uh, that's probably one of my favorites. It's many people's favorite of all time, just because of how unique it is and uh, the interesting and strange way that you need to beat him. Um, but yeah, it's a very fun fight. But right now on this floor, I just need to find the Nikita missiles, and I think they're down here, and at least I hope they are. I'm just going to keep running around until one of these rooms has them, hopefully. This guard is not going to make it easy on me. Just going to go around here. And there we go. Alright. Alright, so... Now I just need to head back. Um, hold on. Great, I'm screwed here. <laughs> Another guard, of course, entered the room. And I think I'm going to be able to exit this area now. Alright, good. Good, good, good. Oh, I'm just going to check down here really quick because I thought that you could see Meryl in this hallway. Maybe that's not till later. No, of course he sees me. No. And now I'm probably just going to end up dying. Oh, I really need to learn how to fight back in these situations. But right now, I don't really have the rations to spare. I'm just, I'd rather just die and start again with full health. Um, yeah, in the future, I'm going to have to learn to fight back because that's just dumb. Just getting myself killed every single time I get spotted. Uh, I can use stun grenades in that in those situations. Uh, the SOCOM pistol. Really just anything that will be able to clear the enemies out and allow me to at least get some room to run away and get some breathing room. But for now at least I know where all this crap is so I can just get it and get out. And you know where that first guard is? Or the second guard that came into the room? Right now he's in this bathroom all the way to the left. And I think he's like going to the bathroom. And, yeah, when, if you're, like, a little kid or something, and you see that, you're like, ah, ha, ha, look at him, but whatever, I don't need to see that right now. Anyway, right now we get to use the Nikita missiles, and this is a pretty fun segment. At least it's cool to look at and wonder if stuff like this is actually possible. I'm sure it is these days. But, all right, so we got the gas choking me out, so we got to do this kind of fast. But I know that, yeah, the electrical thing it showed us is all the way over here the very end of this long hallway and if you don't move the directional button after like one second the missile speeds up to crazy speeds and I can't control it especially not with this input lag on my TV and if you go too slow however I think those gun cameras can shoot your missile I don't know if it's ever actually happened to me but they at least try to shoot it so I don't want to risk it and was that not it I guess I didn't hit the right thing I thought that was it but Looks like nothing has happened, so I'll try again. All right. So let's send another one through. And... Oh! Hold on, hold on. I don't want to... Fire this thing into a wall on accident, and the cameras are shooting at it. And hold on. Uh, and it must be this thing right here. I, yeah, lots of wires. Okay. There we go. And this will allow me to get into the room, and I think the gas mask is also in here somewhere because obviously there's poison gas all over the room, so you can't breathe in it for too long. But the gas mask, I'm pretty sure, is in one of these rooms. I don't know if I can actually access it right now because I'm not sure if I have the security clearance. You might need a higher card than level 3. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of doors levels. But to get to the Gray Fox battle, I just have to go through that door to the right. I know that, but right now I'm just going to check these rooms right before the battle. I am anxious to fight the ninja because it is a really fun battle, it's a really cool battle, a unique battle, 
Like most of the bosses in this game, they're all unique. There's not really one that is particularly boring or anything like that. They all have their moments, they all have special ways to beat them. And I really like that about them. Very imaginative. I like what they did with it all. I've mentioned all that before though. That's one of the strengths of the entire Metal Gear Solid franchise, is that they've come up with very creative ways to fight the bosses. Um, I can't wait for some of the ones in Metal Gear Solid 3 if my this Let's Play goes that far. Because I think Metal Gear Solid 3 is actually my favorite of the uh, Metal Gear games. Although, I mean, this one and 2 are not far behind at all. Metal Gear Solid 4, however, is very far behind. <laughs> no, I, I know that game gets a lot of hate, and it's certainly my least favorite. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's a frustrating game to play. A lot of the revelations that are... Um, well, revealed, I guess, are just kind of dumb, they don't make much sense, and blah blah blah. People have talked about this many times before. I'll probably still play through it again if I get that far, but the one impression I had when I did play it was that it's very convoluted, it ruins a lot of the characters. And right here I got the gas mask, and apparently it doesn't give you infinite breathing time. Uh, I guess it's just slower, because I'm surprised my oxygen bar didn't go away. But whatever. So right here, I'll run back in, and now we will go through and find Gray Fox. Uh, hold on one second, actually. I don't think I fully explored the areas to the left, did I? No, I didn't, because I was running out of oxygen. So I just kind of went in and got a few items and got out. Let me just check these rooms really quick. Yes, pardon my pokiness in this area. You guys don't want to see me just going through rooms and getting random items. You want to see me fight the Cyborg Ninja. Alright, we're gonna go through. Oh, of course, of course. Of course you shoot me, you son of a bitch. And one last camera to get through. I'm sure I could run through this one. It's not very tough, but I got spare trap grenades, so why the hell not? So we're gonna run through here, and oh, this next hallway is pretty awesome. I forgot about this until just now. Uh, this hallway, after this contamination room, hold on. I think you can hear, um, yeah, you can hear the ninjas just, just slaughtering guys. And when you go in there, it plays this creepy, creepy music, and you see just the dead bodies, the gore everywhere, and you're like, what in the hell caused this? Hold on, I'm going to show it in just a sec. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. I mean, for PS1 era stuff, this is disturbing. <laughs> like, think about playing this if, like, for me, when I was 10 years old and I saw this, I was just like, holy crap! It scared the crap out of me, at least. Um, it reminded me of like a Resident Evil game. The old Resident Evil games that were actually pretty scary. Uh, this is right up that kind of alley, and it's kind of messed up. And right here, you, it'll take us right into a cutscene, so I'll let that take over for a few minutes. Stealth camouflage? Who are you? Where is my friend? What? What are you talking about? Oh, what next? Snake. You're that ninja. I've been waiting for you, Snake. Who are you? Neither enemy nor friend. I am back from a world where such words are meaningless. I've removed all obstacles. Now you and I will battle to the death. What do you want? I've waited a long time for this day. Now I want to enjoy the moment. What's with these guys? It's like one of my Japanese animes. I've come from another world to do battle with you. What is it, revenge? It is nothing so trivial as revenge. 
a fight to the death with you. Only in that can my soul find respect. I will kill you, or you will kill me. It makes no difference. No! Ah, fine. He can watch from inside there. I need that man. Keep your hands off him. Now, make me feel it. Make me feel alive again. So, okay. Uh, this battle is... I think it can be done a couple of different ways. Uh, the easiest way, in my opinion, is to do what I just started doing right here. And that's fighting him hand to hand. Because he is like a ninja, he obviously loves hand to hand battles because it is the basis of all combat, of course. And only a fool trusts his life to a weapon. Everyone knows that. Common knowledge. Why would you want a gun when you can have fists? That's the way I like to do things. But I'm pretty sure if you try shooting him, he just blocks everything with his sword. And I'm pretty sure there are ways to end up getting bullets on him. There's ways to make him go crazy and do different things. Uh, but the easiest way, in my opinion, by far, is just to fight him hand to hand. And it doesn't look easy right now because I suck, but um, when you fight him hand to hand, uh, you get all your hits in, he can't block or do anything, uh, you punch him and he gets hit, he takes damage, it's as simple as that. You don't have to do any tricks to be able to shoot him or anything if you don't try to shoot him. So that's what I'm going to do right here. See the strategy right here that I'm trying to um, take on is do a quick three hit combo on him, and then once he starts blinking, obviously he is invincible during that period. So you do not want to attempt to try to hit him because you'll just get destroyed. And as he's blinking, he'll usually try to do some jump attack as he's doing on me. Uh, you need to try to avoid that jump attack. And then once he is done attacking, you will be able to begin your combo again. Because by then, his blinking um, you know, will have ceased by then. And he will be vulnerable. The other thing that you can do is what I just did here. If you throw a chaff grenade, he gets disrupted by it a little bit. Obviously, uh, the suit he's in must be some type of um, electrical or mechanical type thing, so it gets affected by the chaff grenades, and it renders him pretty much useless for the time that ch the chaff grenade is active. Uh, unfortunately, um, hold on. Yeah, I don't know why it's not letting me hit him. Maybe at this point you're supposed to try to shoot him. I remembered it being able to hit him after this. I'm not sure why I wasn't able to. Maybe that is how you end up being able to shoot him for a bit while the chaff grenades are going. Um, I wasn't able to take advantage of that right there, if so, but uh, no matter. No matter what, um, punching him is the surefire way to do damage, um, and it's quite a long battle. You see right there, I'll show you, um, you can shoot him a little bit, and it doesn't do anything. He just blocks it like nothing, without even any effort. So you pretty much just have to play it kind of smart. You don't want to run in completely blind and stupid like just some crazy Rambo type guy, but, I mean, just be a little cautious, and it's not too hard. Now right here the battle gets a little bit easier. He goes into his little stealth mode and all you have to do is pretty much find where he's hiding and it shows you exactly where he is anyway. So it's not too hard. You just go and find him and you do a quick little combo on him and then he will teleport to a different area. And then you just locate him again and you proceed accordingly. It's not too hard. You can see a shadow. You can still see the outline of his body wherever he is hiding and it's just not too bad. If you don't find him, I think he ends up finding you and getting a hit on you or something. I don't know, but whatever. That part's very easy. And this part, once again, not much to it. Stick with hand-to-hand. -hand. And I think right here, all that happens is, yeah, he'll just do a little bit of that. A little bit of razzle-dazzle. And I got caught by it right there, but it's not too hard. Now that I know what's coming, very easy. You run up to him, he will teleport behind you, and just keep running away, and he won't hit you, and then you have plenty of time to get a combo in on him. Not too hard at all. But, the next cutscene that's coming up will be the end of this video. I'm gonna beat this Gray Fox son of a bitch. And the next cutscene I'll just let play to the end of the video. So after this boss battle's over, there will not be any more gameplay. So if you're someone that's not interested in the story and just want to see the gameplay, uh, after this battle's over, this video will be pretty much useless to you. But after the boss fight, you learn a lot about Gray Fox or Frank Yeager or the Cyborg Ninja, whatever you feel like calling him. And you find out that he did, in fact, die at Outer Heaven, I believe it is. And... I forget who it was. Someone ended up recovering his body. I don't know if it's like the members of Foxhound or someone from the government. Uh, I'm going to find out in the cutscene right with you guys because I don't remember myself. But someone ends up recovering his body 
and uses uh, this exoskeleton ninja. They put it on him and revive him. So he's still not technically really alive. He's being kept alive by this suit, and he's not really himself anymore. That's why you see what's happening right here, where he's saying, you know, hurt me more. Uh, I want to feel pain again. I want to feel alive again. That's where all this is coming from, and it's pretty interesting, because the first time you play the game during the battle, you have no idea why he's saying all this. You're like, what in the hell is wrong with this guy? And you find out you're fighting a dead guy. So it's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. And I'm looking forward to this cutscene that's about to come up. Uh, the boss fight's pretty much over. I go to avoid this little energy field and take him out. And, yeah. Hopefully we'll learn a little bit about why he was brought back to life, what he's being used for, what his mission is, what his purpose is, all that sort of good stuff. But other than that, the end of the video is here. So thanks for watching, guys. See you later. <sighs> I felt that snake. Do you remember me now? Can't be. You were killed in Zanzibar. What? Not again. What's happening? Gray Fox. Colonel, that ninja is Gray Fox. No doubt about it. Ridiculous. You of all people should know he died in Zanzibar. No. He should have died, but he didn't. What? It happened before I joined Foxhound's medical staff. They were using a soldier for their gene therapy experiments. I never heard that. It happened right after you retired. My predecessor, Dr. Clark, was in charge. Dr. Clark? Yes. He started the gene therapy project. And where is he now? He was killed in an explosion in his lab two years ago. So what about this soldier? Apparently, for their test subject, they decided to use the body of a soldier who was recovered after the fall of Zanzibar. And that was Gray Fox. But he was already dead. Yes. But they revived him. They fitted him with a prototype exoskeleton and kept him drugged for four years while they experimented on him like a plaything. Today's genome soldiers were born from those experiments. That's the sickest thing I ever heard. They used him to test all sorts of gene therapy techniques. Naomi, why didn't you tell us about this sooner? Because it's confidential information. Is that the only reason? Naomi, what happened to Gray Fox after that? The record says he died in the explosion. I see. But even if that ninja is Gray Fox, the question is, why? From what I could tell, he didn't know who he was. Are you saying that he's just a mindless robot? I'm not sure, but he seems intent on fighting me to the death. We'll meet again. I know it. So you'll fight again? Until you kill him? Huh. I'd rather not. But maybe that's what he wants.